Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches. Thank you for joining me. Before we jump into the meat and potatoes of this video, let's go ahead and get the quick fist watch check out of the way. And here they are. Yeah, well, today I am wearing the, oh look, you can barely see what it is. I'm wearing uh, the Apple Watch. But I am also wearing the deep or the Sea Dweller, the 43 millimeter Redline 50th anniversary Sea Dweller. That is a mouthful, but uh, then again, this is a big chunky watch, so it is also a wristful if you catch my drift. Now, guys, if you don't like watch waffling, which is to say a whole bunch of blah 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 blah, you're only going to want to watch the first couple few minutes of this video. I'm giving you advance warning because I have news. I have a report. I have a missive from Money Penny, my mole deep within the bowels of Rolex. I'm going to read it and interpret it for you really quick, and then after that, there'll be a bit of chit chat about what it means and the state of the the watch market and of Rolex in general uh, regarding the beginning and through to what we expect to happen in 2021. So don't blame me if this goes long. You might only be interested in the first three or four minutes. However, I will sure appreciate it if you throw a like on this video, whether you watch it to the end or not. And if you don't subscribe, please do that. 2020 was crazy and 2021 promises to be also interesting and difficult from the watch perspective, especially as regards the brand Rolex. So let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this, but thanks for being with me, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna have to look down a little bit here to read about Money Penny, and I'm gonna have to redact certain portions of this missive. Again, Money Penny is a source deep within the bowels of Rolex and has proved to be highly accurate in the past. So, hi Mark, um, I hope you had a good Christmas. I watched your video on waiting lists and on Rolex for 2021 the other night. Tell you what guys, that's a very long video, but I'll go ahead and throw a, a link in the description of this one in case you want to review what Money Penny was responding to. And uh, he or she says, my own experience is I was in Spain visiting some friends so I paid a call on the Rolex authorized dealer in Barcelona, which is also the main service center. So that must be the RSC for uh, that part of Europe. And I inquired about the, the Submariner and the GMT. I was informed that they are not taking any orders from non-Spanish residents. And they also said I would need to be on their preferred client list before I would be considered for a steel sports watch. So that's not really all that much different than what we you know, have been talking about for the last couple of years here. But what Money Penny goes on to say is that he or she can then can, can now confirm that Rolex do not instruct the authorized dealers to have a wait list. They do not instruct the authorized dealer to have a preferred client list and that it's at the authorized dealer's discretion how they distribute their watches, but that Rolex indicates to their ADs that they should be distributed fairly to all customers. Again, not, not huge news, um, but we have it now on good authority that Rolex does not have an official policy on the wait list. They don't tell their authorized dealers to do it or to not do it. They just tell them to do it fairly for, in terms of distribution. And I feel like some of the authorized dealers do a great job about fairly distributing what they have and then others do a really terrible job. Some of you guys are gonna have stories about exactly that point, right? So in the comments, tell me, have you been fairly treated by your AD or do you have AD horror stories? Because I know that there's both happening out there. So, so far, nothing, um, nothing earth shattering. But Money Penny goes on to say, Rolex are not operating at full capacity at this time due to COVID restrictions and the lack of staff due to increased sickness levels. So that's, um, that's a bit of inside news, that Rolex is not now operating at full production capacity and that there is increased sickness levels within the, within the employee family of Rolex. So that's sad, that's uh, hard to hear, but it, it, it is not surprising given the, the worldwide pandemic and the things that are happening as relates to that. Um, so. Of course, well, let, let me finish this and then we'll get into the interpretation of it. I'll repeat that last bit. Rolex are not operating at full capacity due to the COVID restrictions and the lack of staff due to increased sickness levels. I don't know exactly, I guess the COVID restrictions relate to how many people can be in a building or a room at any given time. Also remember, um, a lot of the employees 
of uh, Rolex, which is on the Swiss side of the French-Swiss border, are French, right? So they have got to do, there's border crossings involved, there's permits, there's visas, there's back and forth, you know, there's, there's a bureaucracy involved in workers traveling over, the, over that border on a twice per day basis. So it gets complicated when you have closed borders uh, due to illnesses. Okay, Money Penny goes on to say the Submariner is being distributed to the authorized dealers, but the percentage is restricted and limited due to a decrease in production based on the COVID restrictions and sickness levels. Um, well, the fact that there are Submariners going out, but there are not the same quantity of them that Rolex would want is probably no surprise. This explains why when Rolex introduced the new ceramic Submariner at 41 millimeters with its various iterations in various metals and in steel, and of course the GMT, which pre-existed that line, why in the beginning of the year, or actually it was at the end of last year, that authorized dealers seemed to get a spurt of good supply. I think I'm gonna say that was like, what, September, October, right guys? That's when those watches first hit the authorized dealers. And so there seemed like, Right at the beginning, the authorized dealers got some watches in and they were able to put them right out to customers. And so it gave us all hope, certainly did me, that supply in 2021 would be easing up a little bit. But then all of a sudden supply clamped down and the ADs are saying that they have nothing or minimal, receipt, minimal watches being received. And that, of course, dovetails with this letter from Moneypenny talking about reduced staffing levels and reduced production due to COVID. Money Penny finalizes with some what I think is some bad news, which is this is not necessarily expected to alter through 2021. So the authorized dealers will see fewer Rolex watches being distributed to their stores during the year. Regards, Money Penny. Ooh, tough news. Tough news. Now, mind you, first let me put this out there, guys. There are things happening as relate to. Um, the you know worldwide situation that are far more important, whether you get a Rolex or I get a Rolex or he, she, or it gets a Rolex. This is um, kind of on the bottom of the totem pole of things that are important. More important that you're working, that your family is healthy, uh, that you're economically stable and, and, um, and healthy and viable. Okay, so my heart goes out to everybody who has been affected by this thing, which on some level is really you know the entire world. But we are watch nerds, we are watch hobbyists, so naturally one of the things that we do is to try and preserve our sanity by <laughs> retaining our hobby. And one of our hobby is complaining about Rolex. So I assure you guys that you are going to have plenty to complain about all the way through 2021. So um, look, I guess here's a bit of what I would say advice. If you have a shot at one of the new OP41s, if you have a shot at pretty much any steel sports Rolex, if you like it, buy it. Don't agonize over should I, shouldn't I, will I, won't I. Even if even if it's two-tone in the GMT or the Samariner line, if you get the call, I would take it, provided you like the watch. Now, for no reason, under no circumstances, do I recommend that you buy a watch that you don't like, uh, simply to flip it, okay? Leave it for somebody who would love it. But if you are, able to buy a steel sports watch from the AD in 2021, guys, it's going to be by extreme luck. Um, the supplies are going to be theoretically very tight through most of the year. And uh, I don't, I, that supply may not pick up until 2021. Oh, this means it ha will have been not only a strategy for Rolex to have clamped down on supply, which they did do even a few years ago, well before all this craziness started, but that it is further being affected by the, by the you know what. And what that means is the reduced supply has reduced down from a trickle down to a drop or drips here and there. Now, stuff that I'm looking forward to personally, well, I'm on a wait list for um, a, uh, a steel Daytona. And I've been on that wait list for a long time, but it has been, um, my my ex expected delivery date has been pushed back further due to this situation, further probably by about a good six months. And I completely understand that the, the, the these are much, much harder to supply now than ever before. I'll tell you what I didn't fully anticipate would, would be that I would have a real difficult time getting my hands on a turquoise um, Oyster Perpetual 41 millimeter because that watch is spectacular. I would, I would dearly love to get one of those. Tell you what, I'll drop a quick picture of it in right here.
So, boy, I, I don't know. I never really looked at the OP line before, but what Rolex did um, for the for the new introductions at the last uh, part of last year, introducing these, like, throwback Stella dials on the OP and now at 41 millimeters, that really caught my eye. Absolutely stuns me that I'll be that I'm looking at anything in the way of Oyster Perpetual because up until this year, that was one of the least interesting, most boring watches. But, boy, have they brought that line to life, and that turquoise one is my favorite one. But... Those are selling, it's like a $6,000, $5,900, $6,000 watch, which on the gray market is like at double. So um, I, I don't expect to see one myself anytime soon, even though I have a good relationship with my authorized DR. I just don't think that they're necessarily going to have the supply to be able to fulfill an order like that from me. And the same goes true for the Sermit. I, I would really like the, the, the new Kermit. It would be, for me, a really good match for my Hulk. And it would fit in nicely with my sort of like all Submariner collection because I've got the I've got a black ceramic Submariner and I have a Hulk, the green sub, and I have a gold sub with blue dial. So to add a Sermit to that would be awesome. But I think it's going to be a very, very difficult purchase through the authorized dealer this year because I just don't think they're going to get much supply. Guys, thank you for having stuck with me through the entirety of this video. It doesn't look like it's good news for supply in 2021. Are you shocked? Are you surprised? Did you know it? What do you think? Let's talk about this in the comments. I will join you there. This is Goldberg. So glad that I have some steel sports to play with and rotate here. It's Goldberg. Peace out. See you next time. Paint the sky.